Dear brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. There is lots and lots of stuff going on here at St. John this weekend. Yesterday, we had a wedding, we had a baptism, and then today at our 1030 service, we will have the affirmation of baptism for our confirmation students. It's also Reformation weekend and all the things that entail along those lines. And that's just the stuff that's happening in this part of the building. It's been a very active time. So as I looked at the scripture lessons for this week, as I looked at this story from 1 Kings, I seriously considered switching back to some of the more traditional Reformation texts because this lesson about King Solomon and building his temple and all the things that were going on this weekend didn't seem to jive very well for me as I thought about the sermon and, and what I would preach on. But the more I thought about it, I chose not to. And I chose to stick to this text because the funny thing is there are some very deep connections between all that has occurred and occurring here this weekend and the building of this temple of Solomon back in our Old Testament reading. One of the interesting things about this weekend and about this story was the, Solomon, the building of Solomon's temple was this great project that was undertaken for the glory of God, to build a temple for all of Israel to come and worship at. And in part, the Reformation began because of a building project for a very large church, much like the temple at St. Um, Peter's in Basilica in Rome. The Reformation began partly because of this building project. See, what had happened was, and it wasn't about the building per se, they were building a building, and it's a wonderful building, but part of it was the practice that they were using to raise funds for this building. The church at that time taught that you could take the accumulated good works of the saints that had gone before you, and for a fee, the Pope would sell you those good works to get you sort of a get out of purgatory free card. It was to raise funds for this wonderful church, St. Peter's, in Rome. Now, St. Peter's in and of itself is a wonderful building. It's an incredibly gorgeous church building that is indeed built to the glory of God. And over the generations, countless millions of people have been blessed by its presence and the services that have taken place in there. Then there's a little Sistine Chapel that sits off to the side there where the beautiful paintings of Michelangelo. All these things are done for the greater glory of God. And it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And Martin Luther didn't protest that. Martin Luther was kind of a big fan of great church architecture. But what they were doing was tying the forgiveness of sins to something besides faith alone. And this is where Martin Luther, in his reading of Paul's letter to the Romans, points out that this was wrong. They were adding things to what was necessary for salvation. And Luther put his finger on the problem that's at least as old as the building of the first temple back in Solomon's day. You see, when the temple was built in Solomon's day, it was this beautiful, ornate structure, an enormous in size and scope. And on the day that it was built, there were, there were, there were sacrifices galore. The interesting thing, though, is that, that this temple that was built in Jerusalem was built on a hill that was called Mount Moriah. Now, if you remember our story so far in this narrative lectionary, if we go back a few weeks, we find that Abraham was taking his son, whom God had ordered him to sacrifice, to a hill. And that hill was called Mount Moriah. It was there that God replaced Isaac with a lamb or a goat for the sacrifice. And it was on this hill that another sacrifice was taking place this day on the dedication of the temple. And countless lambs and goats and, and other animals were slaughtered and sacrificed on this day. And not too far away from this hill, there would be another sacrifice. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The temple was to be central. The temple was a touch point it was a place where God had promised to be. You see, in the very central part of the temple itself was one thing and one thing only. And it was the Ark of the Covenant that held the tablets of the Ten Commandments. The very word of God was central to the temple itself. It was why the temple was there. It was everything that the temple was about. Everything else that was going on with sacrifices and everything else was not the main point. It was ancillary. But what was at the center 
was God's word. The Ten Commandments, God's covenantal promise with his people. It was at the center of their worship. It was the center of their lives. It was the center of what it meant to be a child of God. It was the promises of God that was central to all these things in God's word. But there became a problem. Early on, God had traveled about in tent. Throughout his time, his people had been this nomadic people that had moved around. And the tent was where the Ark of the Covenant stayed and God had stayed in this tent and moved as the people had moved. But now that the, the culmination of those promises to, to Abram were starting to come true, that they would make of him a great nation, his descendants would be as many as the sands, and he would be a blessing to bless others. These things were all starting to come into place. They now had a country with borders. They were safe. They were secure. They now built a, a permanent home for God in their midst. But what happened in this permanent home was it became the central focus rather than the word itself. The machine of religion had taken over the center and the very heart from the word of God. Luther called out to the church to reform the church because it too had drifted away from the word of God. The word was no longer at the center. There were other things that had claimed precedence over the word. And Luther was calling the church back to the centrality of God's word and faith alone. As I mentioned, don't get me wrong, St. Peter's is a beautiful church. The Sistine Chapel and all that it inspired is, is wonderful. But when you misplace the center of our faith and life for a building or a structure or a set of practices, you run into a problem. It can be the same here at St. John. I've read the minutes of this congregation. There have been great and glorious disruptions in the faith and in the, in the people of God in this place over the carpet color over the instrument that leads our worship, over the programming, over the style of this and that and other fussy little things. All those things distract us from the main purpose that we are here as the children of God, to come to hear his word, to be nurtured at his table, and to be fed with his grace that we may go out into this world to make a difference in his name. Because here too, this is where God has promised to meet us, in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. As we're gathered around his word proclaimed through the sermon and through scripture, through waters of baptism, little Emma was baptized last night. God has promised to be there for her and for us in the waters of our baptism. God is here in these places, not because of our architecture, not because we're really good singers, not because we are Lutherans, but because God loves us. And God has promised to be here with us and in these places. God gathers us together to bring us us into this place so that we may grow, that we may share, that we may learn to use the tools, the footballs in our life, as it were, as it were, to the best of our abilities. God has called us in this place to share his love with all people. One of the great things about St. John is we do that on a very wonderful basis, on a regular basis. There will be over probably close to 300 people who will gather in our church basement this afternoon when open table meets and they, they serve this free meal to one and all. There are countless hundreds of other folks who use our building over the course of the months and weeks from AA groups to the Reedsburg Area Fund to Butterfest. They've all used our building so that they make a difference in this world. As we're gathered here on this Reformation Day, on this day where we celebrate the gifts of baptism and the affirmation of baptism, we remember that it is in this place that God brings us his word. He gathers us around his table, feeds us and nurtures us and blesses us so that we may go out into the world as his disciples and we may reach out in love. Amen. <laughs>